So that's the other thing that I always do when I pull in a chorus is play a billion harmonies. It feels a little midi. Yeah, we got octave, third down, third up, and double. This episode is being supported by Tape It. If you currently use voice notes to record your ideas, you should try Tape It instead. So it's, it started with you sat at a piano. Do you have yeah. any, any illustration of that? I don't know if I have a demo, but I have, you know, here's a, here's a vocal of it, and then let me isolate just the piano, because this would give you an idea of sort of how it sounded. Cry out, I'd never say it out loud out, But I've hated every word that comes out of your mouth What should we fight about this time? Yeah, so I had this song that I thought was really cool on its own it Sounded like that with the piano and the vocal And then I think the first thing I did was I started to build a drum loop That I would sing over And let me go through and pick out some drums these are claps. That's just me clapping a bunch in front of a microphone. There's some reverb on it, some artificial reverb, because the room I was clapping in was very dry. I think this is a layer of synthetic claps, so to speak. I think these are claps that I, these are samples that I found that I thought layered nicely. And then this is this weird kick sound. And then there's a kick snare. And there's a bass on top of it. And the claps sit over it. And I thought that was exciting. I thought I liked the idea of singing the song over top of that. And so I threw the vocal over that. Sounds just like you'd imagine it would. I want my money back now. So you'd already recorded the vocal? No, that was that was that was the thing I added. I started singing over top of that. I want right. my money back now. Ow, I've been in the wrong. There's a couple other tracks on top of it. There's a a Juno 106 plugin. Ow, ow. It's glitching out because I'm on my my new M1 laptop, which is right. Um, how do I say this politely? A terrible computer. <laughs> and um, the... Uh, and there's also a... a uh, this is probably... Yeah, this is Quick Sampler. Um, this is also playing at the same time. <laughs> I thought that was super weird and cool. Um, the sample I loaded in called Toy Music Box. This reminded me of like a merry-go-round or something. Mm. Um, Every word that comes out of your mouth What should we fight about this time? What will you write about this time? What does I thought this was really cool. This was a contact synth that I, I loaded in. I think it's... Um, I bet it's a plugin called Analog Strings by Output, and then it's got Overdrive, Decapitator, and Valhalla Room. Without the processing, I bet it sounds like violins. Yeah, like this sounds like um, Psycho, right? Mm. In the shower, but then it's super distorted. It's interesting how when isolated, all these different elements actually link in to the ly lyrical elements quite well. You know, <laughs> right? It's 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 quite. Fascinating. Yeah, I find that like you know, music is a the the production world is sort of you were saying it earlier it's just completely limitless right you could take a song in any different direction and you could there's no there's no status bar on a song you don't ever get told it's done or it's complete so i do try to be as sort of like thoughtful as i can be in terms of you know okay what what am i saying here what am i trying to articulate emotionally like what what should i add what should i take away um because then it gives me kind of a compass to go by of like, all right, well, the, here's the song. Let me see what I can add, what I can subtract. I think there's also this is a cool this Omnisphere patch that is run through clip distortion. That was really cool. If you, like so many of our guests, use voice notes to capture your ideas, you will love Tape It. It's the iPhone recording app designed specifically for musicians and songwriters. 
With Tape It, you can record straight from your lock screen, set markers, add notes, and even include photos of settings. Plus, there's Cloud Sync, you can import your old voice notes, and to stay on top of it all, Tape It has great labeling features like automatic instrument detection. And all of the above is free. If you currently use voice notes, switching to Tape It is a no brainer. And there's more. If you upgrade to Tapit Pro, it uses two microphones on your iPhone along with gentler dynamic compression to give a much more natural sound than any of the usual apps. And we have a huge offer for you. 50% off Tapit Pro if you upgrade now. Just go to the app and select Tape Notes in the onboarding process or click the link in the description below. Some guitars. So that's all in this uh, pre-chorus, I believe. What should we fight about this time? What will you write about this time? What does it matter if you're not fine? You should have kept this shit There's a plugin by FabFilter called FabFilter Twin 2 that I think is amazing. I don't know how this sounds. Just textural, just stuff happening underneath it to give it kind of a, a depth. Um, and then in the chorus, the chorus is sort of a, a double chorus. And um, I did a thing that I've done many times and I've, I'm hardly the inventor of, but I filtered the uh, highs out of the vocal and I took out most of the instrumentation for the first half to just just um, give some, some release. Feels a little medieval. So the vocals Wish dulled down. Me like I'm a scene. The elements under it are very minor. Even the drums are dull. It feels a little medieval. Brought in some really big synths over top of that. Um Where's the biggest one? Yeah. Some like Stranger Things, 80s yeah. synth. I love arpeggiators. <laughs> I feel like I'm a big, uh, big fan of an arpeggiator. Um, which, you know, for, for the layman is just a chord broken up and played in sequence it can be low to high it can be high to low it can be randomized but as opposed to playing notes on top of each other it's playing them um in a pattern at a certain um value note value half note whole note quarter note so this is eighth note one two three four one two three four i suppose that's 16th note if you're counting it two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four but you know, that's the, the basis of an arpeggio, but I, I do like the way that it breaks everything up. So that's the chorus. There's a lot of harmonies too. Let's see where those live. So that's the other thing that I always do when I pull in a chorus is play a billion harmonies. Yeah, we got octave, third down, third up, and double. All sitting everywhere. It feels a little medieval Kissing the ring In a gothic cathedral Have you ever seen What really happens To people like me When we go out of fashion And then I had a different second verse But I really liked the way That the rhythm of the song felt So I rewrote it So that was the only thing I wrote Over this instrumentation was, They're gonna tear you from your pedestal It's almost inevitable I'm not being cynical, so unreal. Cool guitar, cool bass over it. Oh, I'm not being cynical, so unoriginal. If you get political, they'll make you a criminal. And with medieval, yeah. I mean, lyrically, yeah. you're looking at a subject that you touch on a few times on the record, which yeah. is which is probably a subject that um, only an artist of your generation 
would be able to comment on with any any certainty in that you've grown up in this world, you know, where we're right. surrounded by this constant yeah. coverage that we can share whatever sure. we like to millions of people, <laughs> yeah. uh, whether they want it or not. And other people can do the same about us. Yeah, and we're forced to, to, to deal with the reaction yeah. to that. Yeah, I think this song was a kind of a layer cake of things for me. I think there's the sort of probably most obvious angle of it, which is that it's about, you know, cancel culture and um, being eviscerated online. Um, but I think the other thing and and the thing that really um, was the the impetus for writing the song in general was was more to do with the the sort of like not not cancellation, but a kind of a cultural thing that I don't even think is very new, which is a a thing becomes popular and it's in vogue and and there's this kind of mass like, oh, we love this thing. And then maybe through overexposure, it crosses the bridge from cool and exciting to like overrated and cast out. Ooh. 